What is going on everyone? Anthony Drew Gary here, host of the How-To Show, where we talk about optimizing life, money, and happiness one how-to at a time. Last week I talked about mortgage forbearance and why it may or may not make sense for somebody to do that. And if you've not seen that video, I'll link to it overhead. But this week's video is also going to talk about mortgages, but this time we're going to talk about refinances. And it's not out of the question that somebody you know, or maybe even you yourself, are considering a mortgage refinance. And that probably has something to do with the fact that you've been hearing a lot that mortgage rates are historically low, floating near the lowest they've ever been, things like that. And while those things are true, uh, I want to spend a little time this week talking about how to evaluate whether or not a mortgage refinance makes sense. So when we start to think about this, there are really a couple of different things at play. And, and really, you want to focus on what are your goals out of the refinance. Generally speaking, there are a handful of things that you can do. You can either refinance to lower your rate. And by doing so, more importantly, a couple of things will happen. Either your monthly payment will go down or the amount of time that it'll take you to pay off your mortgage will go down or the amount of total interest that you pay on your house until you pay it off uh, has the opportunity to go down, all justified by the fact that the rates right now are less than the rates that you had at whatever point you originated the mortgage in the first place. When we think about whether or not it makes sense to, to do a refinance, I think it's important to start with, you know, what's your, what's your time horizon? Is this a house that you're going to be living in for the foreseeable future? Uh, are you stable in your location? Are you stable in your career? All of those types of things are questions that you want to ask yourself. And, and really what I'm getting at behind this is the, the process of refinancing a mortgage has embedded expenses in it that are above and beyond just the principal and interest that you pay. And so it may not make sense to perform a refinance if you're in a situation where maybe you're looking to move in a couple of years or you're in a situation where your career might take you to some other location in a shorter amount of time. So when you think about this refinance, it probably makes more sense for folks who are stable in their location and they anticipate staying in the house that they're in for a longer period of time. The next thing I want to talk about is whether or not you're going to use a mortgage broker or a mortgage loan originator. And both of them can get you to the finish line and get you a refinance or, or get you a new mortgage if you're buying a new house. But the way they go about it is slightly different. And generally speaking, a mortgage broker is someone who has the ability to shop around for several different lending institutions and hopefully get them to be competitive with one another to get you a rate that, uh, that's favorable for you and to, to get origination fees that are favorable to you, as opposed to maybe an originator, a mortgage loan originator that is, who probably works for a specific lending institution. And generally speaking, they, they don't have the ability to reach outside their sphere of influence and you know whatever you know rates or terms that they have for a specific period in time are probably more finite. And so just something to be thinking about there when you go to, to look for, for different folks that can help you with this. I, I wholeheartedly believe that relationships are key and so you want to build trust with the person that you're working with. And, you know, part of that process is asking them, you know, what, what are you doing to, to make sure that what I'm about to sign up for in a refinance is competitive? And for the most part, they'll be able to answer that and, and give you the peace of mind that, you know, they're either fighting as hard as they can for their specific lender, or they have the ability to go to multiple different lenders and make sure that you're getting a competitive rate, competitive fees, etc. I want to also talk about the time horizon in terms of a refinance. So to, to do that, let's, let's make a little illustration. Let's say that eight years ago, you bought a house and you bought it on a 30-year mortgage. And so right now you've got 22 years remaining on that mortgage. 
When you go to a mortgage loan originator or a mortgage broker and you suggest to them that you're interested in refinancing, you know, they're probably going to ask you same, similar questions to the stuff we're talking about right now. What are your goals and, and what are you looking to achieve? And while a reduction in your interest rate will help you achieve all these goals, they could do it in different ways. And what I mean by that is in our scenario we just painted out, you have 22 years left on your mortgage until you pay it off. The refinance could match up with that original loan so that you set yourself up for a new 22 year loan. And that would get you to where you'd be paying off your mortgage at basically the same time you would have otherwise. You would just be paying less in interest because the interest rates have come down. However, there is the opportunity there for a mortgage loan originator or a broker to propose setting you up in a brand new 30 year mortgage. And realistically, that means your payment is going to be smaller than if you were to set it up as a 22. But that also, you have to start with the end in mind a little bit here because you've already been paying on a mortgage for eight years. And if you sign yourself up for 30 more, then the, the realistic time frame of paying that off has gone from 30 years to 38. And I'm not saying one of these situations is better than the other or worse than the other. I think that it's all specific to you. You know, personal finance is personal, but you want to start to think about these things and what your long-term goals are. I think it's important to spend a little time talking about what actually happens when you refinance. When you go and you start talking to these different lenders or these brokers, for the most part, they're all going to walk you through a similar process and they're going to collect some information from you. Uh, it's generally all of your, your financial data for a, a recent amount of time, usually two years. And they're going to start to paint the picture of, of your, your risk profile for what it looks like for you to be borrowed money to as a lender, as a lendee, excuse me. And so from that point of view, you know, they'll break down a, a cost estimate for you and every one of, of these lenders will be able to do this and the, the forms all, all generally are the same. You'll, you'll have different things that will come up as expenses on the front end for a mortgage refinance. Uh, the most common ones that I want to touch on are the loan origination fee, uh, the possibility for points, and then you know, you'll have title fees, you'll have prepaid such as taxes and insurance, and all of these things combined will start to formulate what exactly your costs will be to perform a refinance. So when we start thinking about the mortgage loan origination fee, this is simply the fee at the very top line for producing all of the documents and getting you into a new loan. This will vary greatly from lender to lender. And so this is probably the main thing to shop around for besides the interest rate itself. You know, I, I've seen these as low as maybe nothing to as high as several thousand dollars. And so you want to make sure that, that you have a, a couple of different options in mind so that you're not paying higher fees than you need to. Because at the end of the day, borrowing money is borrowing money and you, you don't want to pay more to borrow it. The next thing we'll talk about is points. And what this generally means is how much money you are willing to pay up front in order to reduce your interest rate, maybe below what you could as, as just a general lender in today's market. And so it, it's not out of the question that you can reduce your interest rate, you know, a quarter of a percent, an eighth of a percent, maybe all the way up to a half of a percent, but you're going to have to pay money up front in order to save money over time by having lower payments and paying lower interest over the life of the loan. And so it's, it's pretty, pretty easy to, to figure out whether or not that makes sense for you. You're, you're taking those upfront costs as compared to the, the incremental interest that it would be different uh, if you were to have a, a lower rate versus whatever rate was their base rate and, and divide that out over the number of months to find out whether or not it makes sense to, to try to buy down your rate as, as the mortgage folks like to, to term it. And, it's not as simple as either this or that. You also have to think in the, the sense of if you're, you're paying for some of these things up front, you're also taking away your ability to use that money for anything else that's going on in your life. And this is basic economic opportunity cost. If you're, you're spending it here, you're also choosing to not spend it everywhere else. The next part of that loan estimate fee is your, your title costs. 
And for the most part, title costs are very similar uh, from title company to title company. I believe there are even some states that mandate that title costs must be within a certain range of one another. And it's not out of the question that a lender will suggest, you know, using a certain title company because they you know, have good relationships or good experiences with them. But generally speaking, you don't want to overpay on title work by more than maybe $100 uh, because all of these companies are, are federally or state regulated and they all do the same sort of, of work. And so this is basically a, a substitutable type of thing, either that title company or this title company. And I really hope I don't offend anybody in the title world by saying that. I know what you guys do is really important, but I just don't want anybody to overpay for that specific line. The last thing to talk about on the, the loan estimate are your prepaids, and that's generally your interest for your, or excuse me, your insurance for your, your homeowner's policy and your property taxes and you pay these things up front but during a refinance you're paying for them up front to the new lender but when you pay off the old loan which is the process of refinancing you borrow money to pay off your your existing loan when that happens your existing lender will take anything from your escrow account which goes toward your insurance or your taxes and they will mail you a check back for it so realistically, this isn't a, an out-of-pocket expense except for the fact that it's on paper because you're going to send new money to an escrow account, but you're also going to get old money back that you've already paid. When you start to think about all of these different fees in a loan estimate, it's not out of the question that you can start to ask your lender, you know, what does it look like to roll all of these fees into the loan such that you're borrowing slightly more than you need to pay your, your old loan off so that you don't have to come money out of pocket to get this done. And generally speaking, this is usually an option. And you want to talk to your mortgage lender about your specific in situation to determine if this makes sense for you. And it's just a good opportunity to ask a question and, and see how that looks and you know maybe you can get this whole process done and not have to bring anything additional out of pocket right now so to recap you know again this is a personal issue whether or not it makes sense to refinance in your situation may be different than the folks down the street who just got one done and, and they're boasting about how their lender did a great job for them it's all in in the aspects of what do you want to do with the money that you have available to you do you want to pay your house down as quickly as possible? Do you want to have the smallest mortgage payment because, you know, maybe you're helping somebody go through college or you're trying to, to pay off student loans or whatever that process is? You know, right now the interest rates are, for the most part, as low as they've ever been. So it's a great time to explore these options. But if you've come to find out that your existing loan is at a, a decent rate, you know, if you bought your, your house within the last couple of years, the loans haven't gone down a tremendous amount in interest rate. So it, it depends on, on what you've got going on right now and generally what your life is expected to look like over the next several years to determine if this really makes sense for you. And so I think the final thought on whether or not you should refinance is, is again, look at, the, look at the term. If you've got a 30-year mortgage and maybe you've got the ability to pay more, what would it look like to have a 15-year mortgage? And, you know, and, and vice versa, if you've got a 15-year mortgage, what would it look like if you were to change that into a 30-year mortgage and take the difference between the two and attack other debt or pay off, you know, whatever is going on in your life or even save extra for retirement. You know, all of these things, you've got a bunch of different levers at your disposal that you can you can pull some of them, but you probably can't pull all of them at the same time. And so the more you know, the better, the more opportunities you have to understand your choices. I've said it in several videos before, life is all about knowing the rules and knowing what you can and cannot do to make the best decisions for you and your family. So take all of this information, ask questions. If there's something I've not covered or there's something you don't understand about the process, you can leave me comments. I'll do my best to answer them or get you answers. And just be as prepared as possible for the scenarios that you might find yourself in. That is going to bring this week's episode of the How-To Show to a close. 
As always, if you're getting any value from the show or if you like the content that I'm producing, feel free to hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm to let people know that this is a video worth watching and hopefully they'll watch it too. As always, you can hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you can be the first to know about new content that comes out every Wednesday. And if you've got any feedback for the show or, or comments on this week's video or past videos, leave me a comment down below and I will respond to you. I respond to all my comments and it's a, a good way for me to know what's working well and what's what could be improved. And if you've got an idea for a guest star on the show, I know I'm, I'm trying to get more guest stars on this year. Uh, COVID's been a little hit or miss in terms of somebody sitting next to me, but we've got Zoom at our... Uh, at our disposal and for the most part everybody knows how to use zoom now so there's there's one hurdle check there so if you know somebody that'd be good for a guest star please let me know about it as always i enjoy bringing episodes to you and i hope you enjoy consuming them until next time this is anthony drew gary host of the how-to show signing off mm -hmm.